Now, I know it's almost Thanksgiving time, and everyone needs new dishes on their Thanksgiving dinner to eat. The problem is that Thanksgiving dinners are really fatty, right? There's a lot of starches, there's a lot of fats, a lot of uh, cheeses, lots of meats. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of rounding out of a whole meal. And a thing for me that I personally eat all the time to round out meals and to balance everything is kimchi. Now kimchi is a very important dish in Korean culture. It is, I don't know if it's a national dish, but I'm, I'm dubbing it Korea's national dish. So kimchi is a fermented and pickled cabbage that's similar to German sauerkraut, but we do it better. The, uh, it's spicy, it's acidic, it's really well balanced, it has a, a, a multitude of health benefits, and I think it'd be an excellent addition to your, new, your Thanksgiving table. So next time you're at this Korean supermarket, I say you'd either rec I recommend you to go and buy it, but a tub of kimchi, like I think a kilogram of that is like $20, but we can do it for much cheaper here on this channel. So if you want to feel a little less guilty at Thanksgiving dinner and knowing that you were the one that brought a little bit of health and more flavor to the table, then you'll really like kimchi and you'll start making a lot more of it. So let's just get started. What you're going to want to do is start preparing your cabbage first. You're going to want to get about 4 pounds of Napa cabbage or about 300 grams. I might actually recommend you to get a little bit more cabbage than you think you need because you're going to end up pulling off the discolored and loose leaves and then you're going to lose a lot of the cabbage's weight and volume when you salt it. So once you get your prepared amount of cabbage, what you're going to want to do is remove the loose and discolored leaves from the outside. Once you can't pull off any more, then you're good to go and then you can discard the rest and then get to work on the cabbage. Chop off the root, then cut into four even sections and then pull away from each other to get these nice, crispy, even cabbage sections. Also, these look really fun. Look how fun it is just pulling apart leaves. I don't know, I, I just wanted to put that in there. It was really nice. Anyway, what you're gonna do is you wanna get a large tub and then fill your cabbage in it and then start washing it. There's gonna be a lot of dirt and excess between the leaves because of the way that cabbage grows underground. So you're really gonna wanna rinse these thoroughly. Then once you're done, you're gonna drain them and then you're going to separate the layers and then start laying it, layering it one by one onto the tub and, and then placing a layer of salt between each layer of leaves. So don't be afraid to salt liberally here because these cabbages need time and a lot of salt to dehydrate. So you're going to use about a cup of salt if you're using four pounds of Napa cabbage. I would say half a cup of salt per two pounds of Napa cabbage is appropriate. So, you know, make sure to get in there, get all in the cracks and crevices of between these leaves. So, put a layer of leaves down, put some salt on, put a layer of leaves down, put some salt on. Now, once you're done doing all this, you're going to take your tub and place it to the side. And you're going to set a timer for about two hours. And every 30 minutes, you're going to go back and turn the cabbage so that every side gets salted and starts dehydrating. Now let's get started to work on the vegetables. Now you can really use any vegetables that you want in kimchi. It's your kimchi. Of course, kimchi is a pickling process and you can pretty much do it on any vegetable. But the ones I chose are traditional. Got some daikon radish, some scallions, some ginger, some garlic, carrots, kochukaru. Now have fun here. Get creative with whatever shape that you want to put into your uh, kimchi. I just chose the julienne the daikon and I chose to julienne the carrots as well. And if you want to know how to do that, all you're going to do is peel it, chop off the tops and the bottom. Then you're going to create small little planks here. And then you're going to stack the planks on top of each other. And then you're going to cut in a downward fashion, very, very thin little matchstick strips. And then there you go. You have some matchstick vegetables. Oh, and make sure to have a large mixing bowl that you can put all your vegetables and your cabbage in at the end to mix. So you need a, a pretty big bowl. You can find any of those big bowls at any Korean supermarket, or you can really just order them online on Amazon. Now I chose to put apples in my kimchi because I really like the flavor of apples in there. Most of it will actually reduce and you won't actually taste an apple when you bite into it. 
but you can put any type of sugar, any type of fruit, any type of honey in here in order to balance the acidity of the kimchi. I use about one and a half apples here and then julienne them again and then threw them into the pot. Then you're gonna go and wanna have diced an onion and then throw it into the pot as well. Then you're gonna wanna get garlic, a lot of garlic. This is about 30 cloves of garlic, which is about 120 grams. So you're gonna be here for a while if you don't have a food processor, which I highly recommend using higher food processors instead. And then you're gonna get about a knob of garlic, which is about a thumb's worth, maybe six grams or two teaspoons of garlic. And this next part is absolutely necessary. You really need a fermented fish product like dried shrimp paste or fish sauce. Then pour out about half a cup of fish sauce and pour it into your mixture. Then you're gonna measure out about a half cup to one cup of kochukaru. Kochukaru is a spicy Korean pepper paste that is common in a lot of dishes for especially kimchi. Oh, there's a timer. So that at the two hour mark, what you're gonna do is observe your kimchi and see how much water actually comes out of it, which is actually a significant amount. So that's about 50% of the volume lost there. What you're gonna do is you're gonna rinse it out and I'm, you cannot miss this step. You absolutely have to rinse the kimchi. You must get rid of that salty water and the excess salt that's, otherwise you'll have a horrible end product and you will not like me for wasting your time. So make sure to give that a really good rinse. Then you're gonna drain your product and then you're gonna wring it out. You really have to wring it out here as well because you don't want a you don't want watery kimchi unless that's what you're going for. There is watery kimchi, but this is not the product we're going for today. So make sure to squeeze, squeeze, squeeze that kimchi out, and you know, get a forearm workout in. Once you've wrung out all your kimchi, you can choose to cut it at this point, but it's completely optional. You can wait until the end. But I find doing it here creates less work on the back end for me. This next step, you're going to make a glue. What you're going to do is take four teaspoons of tapioca starch or gluttonous rice flour, mix it with one cup of water, then microwave it for three minutes, and stir every 30 seconds to make sure it doesn't overflow. What you're trying to do here is make some sort of glue or adhesive so that the end your kimchi product comes out a little bit better. Once it starts looking thick and syrupy like this, you're good to go. You want to set it aside to cool for a bit, so that it doesn't end up cooking any of your product. And once it's cooled down, you wanna stir it again to make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom and then slowly incorporate it into your mixture. Now at this point, it's time to get your hands dirty. So throw on some gloves and start mixing. You really want gloves at this point because the kochukaru will sting and burn your hands. So once it looks like this, you're ready to start packing it into some containers. Just a quick note about the containers. You really wanna make sure these are sterile. Wash them twice, soak them in vinegar, whatever you gotta do, just keep them very sterile. Anyway, what you're gonna to wanna to do is start packing your kimchi into your containers. Then once you've created a layer of kimchi, you're gonna to wanna to start pressing it down. And every time you put in a new layer of kimchi, you really want to press it down because you don't want a lot of air in this product because this is an anaerobic process. And to promote fermentation, you really need to make sure there's no air in the, in the bottom. Then once you've got to the top, you really want to leave maybe like an inch or two from the top because your kimchi will overflow if you don't do that. And if that happens, you're going to have a very messy kitchen and you're not going to like me because your whole house will smell like fish and kimchi. So. Amount of kimchi made about three containers worth of kimchi, but I underestimated how much Napa cabbage I would lose, so you probably will actually make a lot more. So maybe four, maybe five containers of kimchi. So based on that, you might be have a month or two supply of kimchi. It really depends on how much you're eating this stuff. But for me, this will last for me about a month. And at the end, you really want to get all those juices in there. You, you don't want to waste any bit of kimchi. Now, since we are fermenting products here, what's going to happen is as the kimchi ferments, it's going to release carbon dioxide. So what you're going to want to do is not completely seal the lid, but leave the tops a little bit open, but secure it with a weight. 
you don't want to expose this to a lot of air, but at the same time, you want carbon dioxide to be able to escape. Because if your gas is just compressed into the kimchi, what's going to happen is your containers are either going to explode or just start overflowing uncontrollably. So you need to have time for these kimchi to essentially fart out their gases. So what I chose for weights is a little bit of water in a container. You can choose really anything you want, a, a book, a cutting board, get some water like I did, but you just need to make sure it's heavy enough to create a little bit of a seal, but not entirely. And then what you're going to want to do is wait. You have to leave these out for about three to five days at room temperature to ferment. And periodically check on your kimchi, make sure it's doing okay, make sure it's not overflowing. And you should see these little pockets of air, these little bubbles forming, and that's that means it's working. That means the kimchi is doing its job, that means it's fermenting properly, it's releasing carbon dioxide, and you should be good to go and we'll have a happy product in about three to five days. I mean, just look at how much gas is released. Look how many bubbles we produce. Sheesh! Look at that. But that means it's gonna be a good product. Your kimchi's gonna come out pretty sour, so that's a good thing. And my God, look how delicious and beautiful that looks. Okay, it's been three days now, so this is about all ready. Mm, so good. Okay, and that is it everyone. That is how you make kimchi. Uh, just a couple reminders and pointers to make sure you get a really good, really good clean product with kimchi. So kimchi it relies a lot on fermentation. So you really have to make sure that you dehydrate those vegetables early. So make sure to salt plenty. And a lot of that salt you think will go into the kimchi. You, you, won't, you won't have a salty product if you really rinse it out at the, at the end. Additionally, you have to make sure that you really push the vegetables down when you're packing it into um, your container. So you really want uh, you want a lack of oxygen because this is an anaerobic process. So you really want to fill it up with as much liquid and not as much air as possible. So really push that down and make sure to leave a little bit of room at the top because it will expand. It, your kimchi will release more liquid. Make sure to really wait. You know, you gotta leave these at room temperature for about three to five days and check on them periodically to make sure they're not overfilling or they're not overflowing and that uh, there's no mold or bacteria growing on them. If you do, then you have to restart and throw it all over. So um, make sure to really have a clean, sterilized container. And uh, other than that, you really should be good to go. Um, Again, this is your kimchi. This is the way you want to make it. So throw in whatever you want. I threw apples in there for a little bit of sweetness. Some people put just regular sugar, but I like using natural sugars. Feel free to put honey if you want. Feel free to experiment with how much garlic you put in, with how much uh, kochukaru you put in. So it, it's really yours to master and make your own, whatever family recipe you want. Uh, you don't even have to use uh, fish sauce. You can use vegan recipes with um, dry shiitake mushrooms and a little bit of uh, wakame or uh, some kombu. Uh, you can even use dried shrimp paste. There's a variety of ways to do it. Um, I've seen people put squid in there just for a little extra like ocean flavor, a little saltiness, a little bit more umami. So whatever it is that you want to do, go ahead and do it. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and uh, make sure to tune in whenever I make my next video. Bye.